it's Miley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Wednesday, July 31st. Okay, so we're going to wrap up the last day of July with a little bit of change, a little bit of transition. And honestly, there are some positive aspects to the day, but as we kind of close out the day and the moon shifts from the Gemini energy into his rulership and Cancer energy, we're probably going to feel heavy and weighted again as we kind of get a couple of flashbacks to Cancer season, which of course was very heavy very, I'm going to say cleansing and purifying, but also very hurtful. We needed to have that breakdown in order for the breakthrough to happen in order for us to realize where it is that we're letting go of certain aspects of our realm of reality of self. And of course, starting to build a brand new foundation that is going to carry us into the future. So the moon in Gemini is going to continue throughout the course of the day. We will see the moon go void, of course, at 1047 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into the Cancer energy at 1119 p.m., which again is probably going to feel very heavy, very weighted. We're going to be thrown back into the ocean of emotion, if you will. Now, the moon in Gemini, of course, is going to continue to have us processing and analyzing different options, different opportunities in order for us to see both sides of the coin, so to speak. We're all up in the headspace. But the minute that we shift into that cancer energy, we drop down into the heart space. So a very dramatic shift, if I do say so myself. Now, there are 11 different aspects taking place here today. Nine of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in Gemini energy going to get into the boxing ring square off with Saturn. Saturn, of course, is the Lord of Karma. He rules over roles and responsibilities, system structures, foundations. He is retrograde in Pisces energy. A square creates tension, creates conflict in order for us to be going through the growing pains in order to see again what it is that we have to close the door on, what it is that we have to bring to a finality, a completion point before we start building a new foundation, a new structure that is going to house the new goal, new vision, new dreams that we're anxiously trying to build towards. This particular energy definitely going to bring more of a negative narrative into play. We are going to be a little bit more pessimistic than normal. Again, the moon in Gemini does kind of throw us in one extreme and eventually will pull us out of that to see things from a different set of eyes. The weight of the world really weighs on our headspace, the roles, the responsibilities that were required to kind of be a part of in order to make this dramatic shift and dramatic change weighs very heavily upon us. We're getting a little bit of a reality check. And even more so, that Gemini energy that the moon is in has us very indecisive has us very torn on what it is that we should be pouring our time, our energy, our attention into. We're not going to sit in that funk for very long. We're going to have the sun shining a bright light in the heart and soul of the zodiac and this Leo energy and his rulership trine beautiful interaction with the north node in Aries energy. So this gives us fire on fire. Fire on fire, first of all, burns away a lot of that negativity, a lot of that pessimistic point of view that we were sitting in with that particular interaction with Saturn. We have the ability with fire energy to kind of burn through those cords, burn through those attachments, lighten the load, if you will, and then regenerate, refresh, renew. And this particular energy, because the sun is shining a bright light on where it is that we have to be bold and brave and courageous, and of course the nodes of the moon showing us where it is that we have to get on the right path to our next potential, to our next mission, this is going to highlight for us where it is that we're building in motivation. We're building an inspiration to actually align with a new set of goals. We aren't seeing life as kind of defeating us at this point in time. We're seeing the challenges, the obstacles, the, the blockages as an opportunity for growth. So we're like, we're kind of stepping up to the plate, so to speak, to the challenges, to the roles, to the responsibilities that are required of us at this particular point in time to close the door on the past. And again, start building towards this new vision, this new goal, this new dream. The moon in Gemini energy, then going to make a positive interaction with the North Node shortly thereafter. So emotionally speaking, we are starting to get on a better page than we started the day on. Again, the sun 
in trine with this north node showing us where it is that we're building in inspiration now we're actually feeling good we're feeling optimistic we're flipping the earlier script of feeling heavy and weighted and negative nancy we're flipping that script into a more positive narrative a positive outlook the moon then goes ahead makes a positive interaction with mercury who rules over the gemini energy that the moon is in but mercury is in his other rulership and virgo energy so our heart space the moon the headspace, Mercury, they're on the same page. They're talking with each other. They're actually exploring the options, the opportunities that we're now percolating on for us to move on, for us to move forward. Mercury and Virgo energy helping us to see the smaller pieces that are needing to be pieced together in our present moment, in the here and now, in order to reveal the greater, grander picture, the greater, grander vision that, of course, we want to start manifesting. The sun in Leo energy, then going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy. This is going to shake us up a little bit, but in a positive way, we may get a jolt of energy that kind of excites us or inspires us for one reason or another. We're starting to understand that, guess what? We're not meant to fit in. We're meant to stand out. We're embracing our individuality. We're embracing our uniqueness. We're understanding that now we have this want, need, and desire for change. Now we're starting to figure out how can we bring this change into our physical realms, into our physical realities. This is us kind of building in the inspiration, in the motivation that we need in order to see the hard part, which is the pivot point, the awkwardness of this adjustment period through. We're starting to tap into new creative ideas, new solutions to some of these problems. And we're just kind of understanding that we may have to think outside of the box for this particular topic and theme for this particular solution in order for us to break free from the old and actually start advancing towards the new. The moon in Gemini then going to sextile, beautiful interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer who is now retrograde in this Aries energy. Chiron has everything to do with the way that we're feeling about ourselves especially where this new identity, this new version of self is concerned. And we're starting to really kind of flip the script in the most positive of ways. We're seeing ourselves through the most positive of lenses at this particular point. We're starting to understand where it is that we do want to expand on some of the ideas that we just had, some of the solutions that we're currently just, you know, still analyzing and processing. We are starting to realize that we're going through a major growth spurt, a major healing chapter. And it doesn't intimidate us the way that it would even this time last month. The moon then goes ahead, semi-squares the sun. So of course, when the moon and the sun come together, there's going to be an aha moment. There's going to be an emotional awareness. A semi-square is a little bit of tension and conflict. So we're probably not going to feel good about what, what we're thinking and what we're feeling. But... It's going to illuminate where it is that we're, again, overly attached to trying to keep things the same and where it is that we have to kind of break free of that in order to make a major change. The moon in Gemini energy, again, rapidly processing the pros and cons of some of the choices, options and opportunities that we currently have available to us. The sun shining a bright light and this Leo energy needs us to be operating from our heart space, not the head space like the Gemini energy has us doing. The moon in Gemini then going to sextile, beautiful interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac. This is the heart activation that we need in order to get alignment with what it is that our higher self, our soul self, our spirit self needs us to do, needs us to pursue from here. The moon interacting with Venus in this way is going to illuminate where we're craving connection, where we're craving change, where we're craving new wants, needs, and desires, especially where money matters are concerned and relationship dynamics are concerned as well. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who is retrograde in this Aquarius energy. This is going to be aha moments. This is going to be light bulb moments. The Gemini energy is an air sign. Aquarius energy is an air sign. We're all up in our head space. We're pushing the boundaries of our thoughts, of our ideas, of our perspective. We are seeing where it is that we have room to improve, to expand upon some of these original ideas that we're just kind of percolating on. And of course, we're empowering our inner narrative. We're bossing up to a positive perspective. And this is all good vibes, which of course is going to put us in a different lens, a different perspective, a different understanding of the power and potential that we're now standing in, that we now have to make a major change in our physical realm. 
the moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Uranus in this Taurus energy. This is like clarity. This is an understanding. This is like a seed being planted in our minds. This is like a jolt of energy to encourage us to pivot, to be spontaneous enough to take a risk, if you will, to abandon the same old, same old, and to just spice things up just a tad, to try different methods, to try a different perspective, to try just taking a good look at our physical realms, where it is that stagnancy has caught us kind of caught up, if you will, and not realizing that that stagnancy is sucking the life energy out of us. We have to take this aha moment, take this light bulb moment, take this epiphany and actually run with it. This is going to be clarity. We are going to start seeing the greater, grander picture kind of form at this point. And overall, we're kind of feeling a little bit manic. We're excited. We're inspired. We want to get the party started, even though we don't know where to start. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Gemini energy, getting into the boxing ring, squaring off with Neptune. Of course, the moon in Gemini is at the final critical crisis degree, 29 degrees of that Gemini energy before moving into cancer energy. And of course, there's an interaction with Neptune because Neptune is retrograde at the 29th degree of Pisces energy. This square is going to highlight where it is that our logical, ra rational, mental plane, like our intellect, is thinking one thing, feeling one certain kind of way, while Neptune, who highlights our soul, our spirit, our intuition, our karma, our dreams, our vision, our imagination, is kind of visualizing a different path. So a lot of the times, especially with Gemini energy, because it is so rooted to the physical form, to the physical realm, a lot of the times we're taking a good look at where it is that we're at in our physical circumstances and we're judging based off of what we see in our physical realms, the options and opportunities that we have available to us. Neptune, on the other hand, needs us to dream a dream that isn't reliant on the data, on the statistics of the present moment. How are we supposed to manifest a different situation if we're not able to imagine, to visualize, to dream outside of the parameters in which we're currently living? So again, a square is a growing point. It is a struggle, a tension, a conflict point. We have our mental plane versus our higher self, our intuition. Which one should we be leaning into? We need to find compromise in both. 1047 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon is going to go void, of course. We lock into that cancer energy at 1119 p.m. We sit in that. We have no aspects taking place here today with the moon and cancer, but that does not mean that we're not going to feel that major shift from the headspace into the heart space.